almost every submission in jiu-jitsu requires you to be able to break your opponent's posture. And one of the most frustrating things is if you're fighting a really strong, big opponent is them posturing and deadlifting out of almost every attack that you try. So in this video, I'm gonna show, in my opinion, the most effective way for breaking your opponent's posture, no matter how big or strong they are. And remember guys, if you like the content, remember to like and subscribe to help support the channel. So the first principle to understand for breaking posture is the further away from your opponent are, the more you're gonna break their posture. So if you imagine like a deadlift, you're strongest when the bar is closest to your legs, cause you can lift, right? But if the bar is really far away, you're at a position it's really hard to lift, right? So the same is true when you're fighting an opponent who has a strong posture. So if I already have the collar here, right? And he uh, he postures up and I'm really close, he's very strong here. There's no way for me to pull him down because it's like I'm the like being the bar as the deadlift, he's pulling straight up, right? But when I have the collar, the further away I am, the harder it is to start posturing here. For him to posture, see how he has to start stepping close. So the more I back up, the easier it is to control. I can leg drag, look up. I can start using this if I go to collar sleeve to break his posture more. So the more you're away, the easier it's gonna to be to break his posture. This is even true if I'm controlling the sleeves as well. So not just the collar, but if I'm really close with the sleeve grip, when he postures up, he can pull more. It's harder for me to separate his elbow from his hip. He can loop my hand easier. But the further away I am, if you see if I'm out here, then I don't have to pull as hard to separate his elbow from his hip. And most all submissions, triangles, arm bars, they're gonna be omoplatas about separating their elbow from their hips, right? So from here, I don't have to pull that much to create the separation. But you see, if I'm this close, for me to get that same kind of separation, I would need my arm up here, which is a really weak positioning, right? So no matter what I'm doing, constantly setting distance is always gonna make it easier to break your opponent's posture. Okay, so to understand the mechanic for breaking the guy when he's already really postured, we're just gonna start with just the collar, and then I'm gonna show more normal applications in a match in a minute. Okay, so the first thing to understand, let's just assume he's really deadlifted all the way up here. So when he's deadlifted all the way up, I have to follow him up, right? Come back down. So just imagine I was in my guard, I had a collar grip here. If, as he postures, if I try to hold tight, it's gonna rip my grip off. There's no way for me to stop him from posturing when I'm this close. So instead, when he goes up, I kind of, you can have a lower grip if he's very tall, it'll make it easier to hold, because sometimes he gets too far away when I'm high. So I'm gonna be kind of lower, mid. So as he postures up, posture all the way up, I follow him up. See, now he's fully deadlifted. I'm gonna come up on my hand and I let my upper body follow. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my knee shield or my shin here like a bar to block his hip. And this is gonna function basically like a reverse deadlift. I'm putting like a bar in the way of his hip and I'm gonna back away a bunch and it's gonna bend him over the bar. He can't follow so he has to collapse forward. And again, I'm using Robin because he's extremely, what are you, like 100 kilos or something? Right. Yes. Okay, yeah, he's, oh, sorry, he's a featherweight, that's right. Okay, so uh, he's a, a really strong, heavy guy, so go ahead and posture all the way up here. I'm like this, right, and I can't pull straight down, there's no way here, so I use my left foot on the floor, I use this knee shield, and I'm gonna back away really far as I drive my shin in to pull him down, right? Of course, when I'm here, he's gonna start trying to posture more, but now when I'm down here, I see I'm starting to get that distance. And there's different, I can have the sleeve now, the ankle, I can go to daily Hiba, but now start posturing back up it's much harder for him to start regaining the posture. And this is the basis for setting up bolos and all sorts of attacks, okay? So I'm gonna do that one more time, right? I'm up here like this, I get the collar, he postures all the way up. I use the knee shield, my left foot is gonna tap the floor and I wanna stay kinda of tight on the calf here. Circle this way just a little bit. Okay, I wanna stay kinda of tight on the calf here. So if I'm like this, he might step out, right? So I'm like this, I get the collar, he postures all the way up. I hop back and pull him over the shield. As I break him down, I set more distance. And now I can start building and attacking different ways from here. So now that you know how to break your opponent's posture, the next big thing you're gonna to need to deal with is your opponent constantly breaking your grip. If you're breaking their posture by controlling the collar, the natural instinct is gonna to be to break your grip. However, this is gonna give you access to controlling their sleeve, which then transitions into the collar sleeve. And in my opinion, the collar sleeve is one of the most important guards in jiu-jitsu because of this fact. Because by controlling one sleeve, it allows you to always control your posture with the other hand and denies their ability to break the grip. Of course, as I try to break his posture with this, he's gonna hate this. So he's gonna start grabbing my wrist and breaking the grip all the time. Okay, so if I go for this and he goes to break the grip, he's always gonna give me access to the sleeve. I know that's coming. So as he breaks, break, I get this sleeve. Once I get the sleeve, now I can re-grab the collar. Right? And this is one of the reasons I think collar sleeve is one of the most important guards to understand Jiu Jitsu is because the collar controls the posture and the sleeve control makes it difficult for him to break the collar grip, which allows you to permanently control the posture. And when you control the posture, you can set up submissions and, and attack the guy and tire him out. There's so many benefits. So same idea here. I get the collar, he breaks the grip. I get the sleeve, now I go for the collar. He's gonna deadlift all the way up again. So as he did go all the way up, yeah. 
As he deadlifts, I do the same thing, but I'm just gonna do it with the sleeve and the collar now. I tap the floor with the left foot. He stays really tall, really posture, push it forward, everything, right? And I back up and pull him forward. Now I pull him down. I keep the collar sleeve, and now I can start doing stuff like setting this left foot on the hip, push out, create distance. And see, now I'm so far away. See, so start posturing up, Robin. It's very hard for him to posture. Even if he's standing with the foot on the hip, the collar, this much distance. See, break the collar grip here. It's very hard for him to reach anything. And now I can start using that to actually set up attacks. So this can also be really useful in the grip fighting game as well. Cause like when I'm here, I'm often looking for a sleeve. Maybe I can't get that, I get a collar grip. So if I understand the idea of the shield on the initial guard pole, I'll catch the collar and I'm gonna look for my right shin to cut into that kind of knee shield positioning. And I lunge in and pull straight into that shield. And that breaks his posture down. And again, once I have the posture broken, it's so much easier to set up stuff. I could even switch to the other hand on the lapel and start playing out here. But again, the posture's broken and this can start turning into different grips like the homolo guard. Uh, I could start playing reverse de la Hiva, but everything's gonna be easier to build off from there. So now you know what to do if you have the collar and you have the sleeve, you know how to break the posture, but some people are really difficult and before you can even get an initial collar grip, they're posturing and breaking and they're so tall early that it's impossible to even get the collar grip. And if you can't get the collar grip, then you can't get the sleeve when they break the grip either. So you have to have a different way of attacking. So my main way of dealing with this is attacking the lower body. And this can come about in barren bolos and ankle sweeps and ankle locks, but you you have to have some, some kind of lower body attack system to threaten the guy enough to make him come down and address the problem. So now we're gonna discuss the situation that he's so tall early that you can't even really establish a good collar grip to try to break the posture. So maybe I sit up here and as I'm grabbing, he's breaking so fast, you just can't even initiate that process. So when that happens, we have to use other threats to threaten him to make him come down. So if he's staying really tall, the one good thing is it's hard for him to control my legs, my lapel, cause he's so far away. So here there's a lot of different options. I'll give you a few different ways to do it. Uh, if you like to do bolo stuff, I could grab the belt and start pulling and threatening to take him backwards and off balance in this way for like barren bolos and stuff, right? Here I can start building and attacking, go back up. Usually when you start doing stuff like this, if I start going here and trying to lace or whatever, he's gonna come down and start engaging and give me access to the collar. And again, once I get the collar, now all these other off balances and different guards will start to open up. If you don't wanna do bolo stuff, another easy way to do it would just be butterfly hook this and try to do like a classic ankle sweep and knock him over. Of course, as you try that, he's probably gonna come down and engage because it's not that easy, right? So I might be here, step that leg a little forward. See, the more he's tall, the more close his legs are to Together, right? So if I try to go here, he's usually gonna reach for my lapels or something to catch balance like that, see? But look, now I'm getting access to a collar again. And now I'm starting to set the distance and start building and attacking from here. Another really good option to attack the lower body whenever they're tall is if I grab this pant leg or ankle, I can just set this position here and go underneath to this X position. And again, I can knock him straight back or I can block his shin here with my right hand and now I can bump him forward and that'll start bringing him down. And then from here, I can start going for the back. I actually made a video about this series uh, before, but even here, I could start coming up and controlling lapels and as he backs out and stuff and tries to get his guard back, now I'm establishing the grips and controls. Um, another way, if we're starting sitting up and he's really tall and he doesn't give me any of that stuff, you can start building off like a single leg guard game, right? So here there's a threat of a single leg. He's probably gonna have to come down and engage me on some level. I get access to a sleeve. I can start bumping, whatever. Now I get a hold of a collar and I can start building. Okay, so it's important to understand uh, whenever you're playing a system in jujitsu, you have to know when you can play it and when you can't. So if it feels impossible to get the collar grip, you have to do other attacks. But once you get the collar grip, you can pretty much always break the posture using that mechanic. So if you guys like these videos, be sure to check out my website as well. I have a lot of free content on there. As well as on my website, I can be a lot more organized in how I teach. Sometimes on YouTube, because of how the algorithm works, I have to make videos in a certain way so they get promoted. But on my website, I can be a lot more organized in the way I make things. Also, if you guys uh, have future requests for videos, please comment and let me know what you'd like to see me cover next. And as always, if you guys like the channel, please like, share, subscribe to help support the channel.